Good evening. Hope all of you are well. Great to be back in person. My apologies for the technical issues. Um, next time I am out of town, I'm not going to do a video. I'm just going to do an audio and then I won't have any of these problems. It'll be so much easier. So we are uh, right now on Daf Kuf Hey Amud Beis, and we're three lines into the wide lines. And then we're going to learn Daf Kuf Vav, and we'll stop at the very last word on Kuf Vav Amud Beis, which is Baruch Hashem, the end of yet another parak, which is the parak of Mitzvah Chalitza. Um, and today is actually a fairly practical Daf, certainly the second on it. So let's jump in. The Gemara says three lines into the wide lines on, on Kuf Hayam Bez, referencing a Gemara of Chaltz Bishnaim, how many Edim are required. So we saw that there was a Machlokas in the Brisa that was just previously quoted. And in this Brisa, it speaks about the Shita of Oso Hazuk. So the Gemara now references that Shita. Amr of Yosef Barman Yumi, Amr of Nachman, Ein Halacha Ke Oso Hazuk. The Halacha is not like this pair. And this is the pair that had said that we don't need to have a full set of Edim, even if you have two Edim, even if you have one Ed, all is fine and good. Says the Gemara, it's great that that's the halacha, but you you've repeated yourself. He said two things. First, you said the chalitza is not like the guy who holds two, and then you said chalitza is bishlosha. So why do I need both lines? They both imply the same exact thing. So the Gemara says, no, they don't. Tzriche. In fact, we need both lines. So if you had the first line that simply said we don't hold like the shita of two, then havamina that hani nidi lechatchila. <laughs> I might have thought that we're not allowed to have two the chatchila, but with the it would be fine about the yevada for the tray kamash malan in halacha ko. So azuk, we don't pass them like the lenient shitas that say that we uh, that we have two uh, that we have two people. That's not allowed. Not even with the yevet. The yashmina in halacha ko so azuk ela ketana kama. Have a mina diavad that had it been that we only had the line of yashminun. Uh, then Remember, there was another sheet that we saw in Rabbi Huda that maybe we would need five people and says, no, we need three. And we don't, need, we don't allow two and we don't need five. We need three. Three is how Chalitza is done. That's the right way. To do it. <clears throat> the Gemara says, Maisa, Maisa this was this case where a husband and, a husband and wife or whatever, a Yavam and Yavama were locked up in a place together. Says the Gemara, Beinola, Beinola, Miyodana. How would anybody know the case to even talk about? It? The Gemara was telling a story. How do we know that it actually happened? If, if, it's one thing to give me a halachic construct and make something up. We've had plenty of those cases throughout Shas, but here we're saying we know that this happened. It's a maisa, which means that somebody saw it. So it says the Gemara, Amr of Yehuda, Mershmul ve'edim ro'an osomi bachut. People saw from outside that he uh, that he did that he did chalitza that she did chalitza. Yibayel lehu maisa shechaltu beinol the beinav ro'an. Do we say that really the maisa that took place was outside? Of the jail, and Rabbi Akiva, who was at a time in his life put in jail by the Romans, was he the one in jail, and the Shaila was brought to him? Odil more, perhaps Maisa Shechol Tzbeinu Lebeinu Bebeisu Asurim, and uh, or or was it that uh, they were each in their own cell, and Rabbi Akiva was in the cell next to them, and he saw what was going on? Like what was the the Metzias of the case? Not only was the couple in jail, but Rabbi Akiva was in jail also, and that was the way that the case in the Mishnah had taken place. Starting at the very top, uh, no, I'm annoyed. We should have should have finished the last last yeah. uh, sugya right at the bottom of the page because then we would have. I think you 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 coined this term, or Mayor Shapiro. You didn't coin it. Would have been beautiful. Let's pretend like this was yesterday's daf and. Uh, and then we'll do a perfect uh, from Kuvavam Medal, the top word, to Kuvavam is the bottom word. Let's jump in. Tana Rabban and the rabbis have taught us in a brisa. Actually, it's Osefta. Chalitza mutas kshera. If you have a chalitza that is intentionally done in error, that is considered kosher. What is a chalitza mutas? Ezohi chalitza mutas, says the Gemara, answer number one, Lakish kol lo chalutz ubekach atakonsa. By doing chalitza, you'll become married to her, which is a fallacy. That's not... That's not correct. That's it's the exact opposite. I mean, you can never marry her ever again. You're done. You're severing the, the Zika. You're done. Says the Gemara, Amr Rav Yochanan, that can't be. Anishon, I have a brisa. Ben shini skavin hu, alone is kavin. He ben shini skavin hu, alone is kavin hu. If he doesn't have kavan and she does, or vice versa, then what's the halacha chalitza sapsula? And the halacha is, ashi is kavin, shneim keachad. The at amr's chalitza sakshere, you're going to say this chalitza mutas is where you say when you do the chalitza, that's when you're going to be married. That's not. That means his kavana is different. It means his kavana is to get married, not to do chalitza. But Yochanan says it's impossible. That can't be what chalitza mutas is. And therefore the Gemara rejects this idea. Mm -hmm. Six lines down, kuvav menaf. And the Gemara says, Ela kol she'omrim lo chalotz lo almana shetitin lo chmasayim zuz. The uh, charlatan move here is that you're basically going to say, do chalitza and she'll pay you 200 zuz. So now you're doing chalitza the shame chalitza. But you have an ulterior motive that we will soon see. It's just a hook. No, because we, there, there's no obligation to actually pay, as we'll soon see. But the Gemara is saying that if a person does chalitza this way, 
where the, the man says, you know, you're going to let her do chalitza and she'll give you 200 zoos, fine. So then the 200 zoos is on the table in theory, but only in theory. And we'll see why that's true in a minute. Tanya Nami Hachi, the Brisa supports this shita of Rabbi Yochanan rejecting Reish Lakish. Tanya Nami Hachi, the chalitza mutas is kshera, and ezo hi chalitza mutas, kol shormim chalos almanas shenot shati te lachma sainzus. And in fact, Maisa, there was a story where this took place. The brother-in-law, the you know, Ruvain died, and <clears throat> Rachel was left as a Yavama, and she was meant to go, meant to now marry Shimon, but she didn't want to marry Shimon. Ain't Hagunla. They said to him, Chalotzla, let the Chalitza take place. So that you'll then receive 200 Zuz. And he says that this chalitza is actually kosher because it's not like, remember, Rish Lakish's answer was a total ruse. It's as if you're not doing chalitza. We're, we don't, we're not telling you it's a chalitza. You're doing chalitza, but it, you're really getting married. It's a lie. The whole thing's a lie. So here, it's not that the action that you're doing is misintended. You're just lying about a secondary step, which is that you might get paid. So says the Gemara, in the name of Reb Chia, that works. Hahuda Asa, the comments of Reb Chia Bar Abba. There was a man that came in front of uh, uh, Reb Chia Bar Abba. Omar La, they said, it's actually a, a couple, it seems, and Omar La, he said to the woman, BT, my daughter, Amodi, you should get up and get married to this person, namely, do Yibum. Omar Le, Ima, her mother said, I don't think so. This, this guy is not marrying my daughter through Yibum. Yeshiva says, Oh, he so she'll take a seat. She's not a little bit of a tongue in cheek comment, is that she's not going to be marrying this person. Omar La, Yod Dasle, and uh, the Rebbe said, Reb Chia Bar Abba said, do you know this person? And Rashi highlights a little bit of a subtext of this comment. A brilliant Rashi, we wouldn't have known necessarily. Rashi is about 10 lines down. It's the kind of question where you say like, uh, you say something that doesn't sound, you know, mean, but it's mean. Be like, do you know something that I don't know? Like that kind of a line. That's what the Gemara says. You know something bad going on here? Omer Le, yes, I do. In this guy is uh, he is chasing the dowry. Mamona hu de the He wants to consume our funds. He knows that we're from a wealthy family, diamond business, nursing homes, whatever the business is. So he the, they said we don't want this guy to join the family. He's not coming in. So Omar Allah, he says to the girl, Lo nichalach, you don't want to marry him. And Omar Le, she said, the Kala, the Yuvama says, No, I don't want, I don't want to marry him. So Omar Le, she says, so then the Rebbe said to the to the Yavam, Chalotzla, allow the Chalitza to take place, Bekach Ata Konsa. Oh, that language doesn't work. Bekach Ata Konsa. We said that was the sheet of Reish Lakish. We'll get back to that in a second. Says the Gemara, Lebasar de Chalatzla, after the Chalitza, Omer Le, Hashta, Minach Ifsalala, now that you did this bad form of Chalitza, but you did something, now she's puzzled to you. Chalotzla, Chalitza, Samal Yasa, Kihechid, Tishtere, Alma. Whole thing was a double ruse. The first level was to do this some type of chalitza that would at least put her in a questionable category. And then he pulls the wool over, wool, wool over his eyes and now he's trapped, he cannot marry her. And then he has to do a chalitza mal yosa, a regular, regular chalitza without the hook of marriage because the marriage hook doesn't work anyways. So that she can be marrying someone lashuk, she can marry anyone she wants. Bas Chamuha de Rav Papa, one of the family members of Rav Papa's father-in-law, Nafla Lifne Yavam Shein Hagunla, similar scenario, where Yavama fell to a man that was not fit to be married. Asa Lekame de Abai, they went to Abai. Amar Lei, Chalotz Lei, you should do Chalitza, Vekach Ata Konsa. This is, again, the same poor language. This is Reish Lakish's model of a Chalitza Mutas, which should not work. Amar Lei, Rav Papa, Lo Savar Lamar, Lahad Amar Rav Yochanan. What are you talking about? Rabbi Yochanan highlighted already the brisa that indicates that they both have to have kavana to do the chalitza. And when you tell someone that their chalitza is knisa, that it's actually marriage, he's not thinking about chalitza. That chalitza should not work. What then should be the mutas? How should I tell them to do this? You should tell the, tell the guy that I'm going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you that you're going to get 200 Jews and really you won't. After the chalitza was done, Omar La, he says to the woman, the Yavam, or now the Yavam, the the chalutz now says to the to the chalutz, "Zil havli, give me money." Amarle, no, misate ani bach avdali. I did just a, I did a, a misate. I did a, I did a ruse. I, I just chapter uh, around. It's not actually happening. You're not getting any money. Milotanya. After all, we know the following is the case. mi A person is running away from jail, a jail that they didn't belong in, because if you belonged in jail. You should go back to jail. But in this case, let's say that a person's running away from jail and they're innocent. Why is Ma'avra? There was some type of ferry or a boat that was going to help him to be safe. It was leaving right then. The funa. The Amar lay, and he says to the person running the boat, told Dinar, very large sum of money, the heavy rainy. I'm going to give you a large sum of money. It's a thousand dollars. It's a two dollar ferry ride. Have you ever taken the ferry in the bottom of Manhattan to go to wherever you're going off of the Battery Park? Says the Gemara. If he says take a dinar, the halacha is ein lo el 
the dina, he only has to pay the regular the regular ticket price of the ferry. Alma, what do we see? Obviously, I'm allowed to, under these circumstances, the ruse is not binding. And therefore, in our case as well, the ruse is not binding. So the chalitza works, but nobody gets the 200 sous. Omar Lehi says to Rav Papa, Avuchecha, where's your father? Omar Lehi b'mata, he's in the city. Eimach, imeichecha, where's your mother? Omar Lehi b'mata, she's also in the city. My parents live in town. Yoy b'hu ene u'shchivan. So he looked at uh, Rav Papa's parents. This was Abaye talking. Abaye looks at Rav, Papa, Rav Papa's parents and they died. Oh, whoa, oh, like big discussion here. What's going on? Uh, was it was it Ayin Hara? Because Abaye didn't have parents, as we know. Av Hashem, he had no parents. And uh, Rav Papa did, and maybe the reason why Rav Papa was able to learn so well is because his parents were taking care of him. That's why Rav Papa knew how to respond to Abaye. Was it a jealousy factor? It's not so simple what's going on here. The Gemara is uh, quite cryptic in its presentation. We don't know exactly what's going on. The Rishonim have to deal with this. Tanur Rabbonon, a continuation of this discussion of Chalitza Mutas. We said Chalitza Mutas is Kshera, and remember we defined according to Rav Yochanan that Chalitza Mutas is where a person says, do this Chalitza and you'll get 200 Zuz. Get Muta Apostle. If a man is convinced to give a get uh, with this erroneous uh, base, it does not work. Chalitza Meusis, Psula. If you have a forced get, that is a forced chalitza that doesn't work, and get ma'usa kasher. And a get ma'usa, a get that's forced is kasher. So says the Gemara, I don't understand. How is it that you have a case of chalitza ma'usis, a forced get, a forced chalitza, and a forced get? Amar wrote, Sani, afilu chalitza nami. If he says, I want to, then the chalitza should work. Why is the chalitza ma'usis psula? And if it's not the case, we low Amar wrote, Sani, and if he doesn't want to, then get nami blow. <laughs> Man of shah. Now, how can you have a scenario of a forced get? So says the Gemara, Kamar. This is Pshat and how you can have a forced anything. Chalitza mutas, this is a reinterpretation of the Bryson. Chalitza mutas la olam kasher. Everyone agrees that the chalitza mutas with the, came with the shita of uh, Rav Yochanan, that do the chalitza and the husband will get the chalitz, will get 200 zoos. Everyone agrees that's kosher. The get muta'a la olam pasal. Everyone agrees that a get that was done with a ruse is going to be possible. Let's say they say to him, oh, take your get and make it into a paper airplane and throw it into the, into the air and it lands in her yard. Not sufficient. That doesn't work. Okay. Then the Gemara says that chalitza uh, meusis. If you have a forced chalitza viget meusa and a forced get, it depends. Both of them depend. Depend. Zimnin kasher zimnin puzzle. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not. Hada amar rotsi ani. Hada larma It depends. Oh, so how does how does one show partial desire to give a get or to do chalitza? So it says the Gemara detanya. The Bryce writes, Yakrivo, so malamit shakofano. So, under certain circumstances, if a person commits to bring a korban, the Pasuk of Yakrivo, so sounds a little bit like a forceful language. And it means that we can force him to, to bring the korban. Yachal bal korcho, maybe we can say against his will. Sounds like forcing when you say, well, this is a strange question. Talmud Lomar, the so no. So, okay, it's on. What is, the, what is the case scenario where it's Ritzono, but he doesn't want to bring it? That sounds like an inherent contradiction. So, says the Gemara, a very well known line. Uh, one that led to some serious scandals in regards to Gittin. And the Gemara says, okay. We beat the guy until he says, really, I do. Really, I want to. So let's say there's the recalcitrant husband who doesn't want to give his wife a get. He's left her in Aguna. So you take a baseball bat and you tell him, I'm going to hit you every 30 seconds that you don't say I'm willing to give a get. So that is a get ma'usa. And the shaila is, does that count? And some of the Meforshim explain this principle, not here, but I've seen this elsewhere, that the principle of kofen osoat sheyom erotsa'ani is because when we're physically hurting him, what we're doing is we're digging down to the neshama. Really, his neshama wants to do ratzan Hashem. Really, that's what we're all like. Okay, we have, a, we have a behema body on top of us. What can we do? But this person, be'etzem, deep down, really, we all, if you ask anyone on Rosh Hashanah, do you want to do what I do? Yeah, we all want to do ratzan Hashem. So this guy, is a, he's a bit of a rush. His body has gotten in the way of emotion. So we beat him with a baseball bat with a golf club until he says, rotsani. So the Gemara says that right here, it seems, kofen oso, ashiyom rotsani, that actually seems to work. The Maisa, it's a real Shailan poskim. The Raman Shulchan Aruch in, uh, in the Halachos of Gittin uh, says that a get ma'usa is not kosher. And therefore, the whole baseball bat scenario doesn't really work. And therefore, if a woman gets divorced based on a get ma'usa, that somebody came there with a baseball, baseball bat and he changed his mind magically after a couple of bruises to the head. So is she divorced? Is she not divorced? And will the next kids be mom's heir? These are real These are real shots. There was a big scandal in New York a couple of years, many years ago, probably 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Court and people went to jail and fines and a whole big mess. 
Okay. 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 Ten lines from the bottom. Kuvav Amar Al. Amar Rava Amar Av Sechora Amar Av Huna. Let's remember Rava's name here because we'll come back to it in a minute. Rava is quoting his Rebbe Rav Sechora, who is quoting Rav Huna. Cholzin Af Al Pi She'ein Makirin. Random couple walks into Bezdin and they want to do chalitza. The Bezdin doesn't have to do any checks and balances. You can do chalitza. Mema'anin, a young girl can do miyun. Af Al Pi She'ein Makirin. They don't have to know the girl. They don't have to know the husband. Fichach, therefore, because in these cases with this presentation we don't know who these people really are. We don't know their yichus, whatever the case may be. Fichach, Ein Kosvin Get Chalitza Eleim Kain Makirin. You can't write a document indicating what happened because we don't really know who these people are. Ein Kosvin Get Miyun Eleim Kain Makirin. The Chayshin LeBezdin Tone. We're afraid that these people aren't the real deal we don't know i've been clearing a shiloh with a lot of rabbanim now am i allowed to do a bris where the father's jewish and the mother's not jewish because even if i'm the one to tell them that the babies are going but the mice say they don't care what i think i'm orthodox they don't they don't care what i think i just did a bris today mother did a conversion in a in a reform in a reform synagogue with a, a bezden comprised of at least two women maybe three i don't know the third diane De, 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 I don't know, I don't know how, yeah. whatever the word is. <laughs> Lemaisa, the, the Geras is not kosher. So my Mesorah has been that you uh, do the bris because you do the circumcision without a bracha. And Befem Mala, you tell them that the babies are going, which is what I did. It's not very comfortable. I said, I'm, I'm, I cannot make the brachos. It's a reform conversion. And in Jewish law, reform conversions are, are not acceptable. Lemaisa, I was standing at the, at the circumcision today. And I was very uncomfortable. I'm like, the whole room feels that like, that I'm giving a stempel because I'm there. I wasn't wearing a talus. I didn't take out my kiddush cup. I, I, it, if you know, there was someone there, a father of someone who Davins in our shul. He was there. He was, he was, he caught every little nuance. The whole room is screaming, Shekhi, and I pursed my lips. <laughs> I'm like, I, so I, the, the rabbi made the brach of lachnisa b'riso shal. Forget the father. The rabbi made lachnisa b'riso shal. I didn't make the brach of alamila. So these are like some of the shilas of the chayshin and the bezdin tone. Like, what is the responsibility of a bezdin? In this case, I'd be representative of bezdin to say, I have to put my foot down and say, I can't do this anymore. So I was just in a wedding this week by Avi Stein in New York. I spoke to a personal shechter. Um, and he said, yeah, the Sri Deish uh, wrote about this in Europe. And he said that it really should not be done. But other posts can say it's mutter. I have to figure this out. But this is the content of the Bezin Mutin. These people walked in to do chalitza. They walked in to do me. We don't know who they are. I'm not putting anything down on paper. I'm not saying that, they, that this, there's a start to support this. And Virava, Rava, who actually quoted his Rav, four lines from the bottom, is going to give his own sheet of Rava. Didei, he himself disagreed. Omer, ein cholzen came back here. No, the integrity of the Bezin has to start when the doors open. The second they walk in, we need to know who they are. But ein the man in Elam came back here. We need, we need the paper trail. Here in America, when an Orthodox rabbi marries people, get me a letter from your rabbi, whoever it is that says that you're actually Jewish. The Fichach, therefore, because when we when they walked in the doors, we verified who they are. Therefore, Kosvin get chalitza al fishem makirin. But Kosvin get me an al fishem makirin. Vilochai shim lebezin to. If everything you do in the best and has a paper trail, you don't have anything to worry about. So Rabbi took a different approach than his rabbi. That brings us to the final Mishnah in the Perak. Uh, we are on the top of Kuvav Amid Beis at the top line. Now let's talk. This is the one pager of how to do chalitza, this Mishnah. Mitzvah's chalitza, how is it done? Ba hu the Yavim to the Bezdin. The Yavama and the Yavam show up in Bezdin. Behain masin lo eitzah hahogenis lo. When they look at the marriage, if they're considering doing Yibum, they give advice. We've seen this Gemara referenced at least twice in the Masechta, where we basically say, if it's an older, if the ages are off, we say, why are you bringing ketot into your house? Like, forget it, just marry someone your age, fine. So they give the advice. Rashi references this on the top line. Kalach eitzel shekamosra, go marry someone who's like you. Fine. Then the Gemara says, uh, uh, how do we know that they give eitzel hogen? She then uh, says, as the Avama, me'en yevami lahakim lahachiv shem v'yisrael lo ava yevami. She says that if they're going to do chalitza, she says, my Yavam does not want to be making Lachim. He doesn't want to give a name for his child, for his brother's child, for his brother who died. He doesn't want to marry me. But who Omer, the, the Yavam then says, it's a very uh, uncomfortable dialogue in the room. Uh, and he says, I don't want to marry her. Very interesting. Um, and the Gemara doesn't discuss about whether or not it would be mutter in other languages, but the Gemara says it should be done in Lashon HaKodesh. It should be done in, in Hebrew. And then the Pasuk says, uh, that uh, the Yavama should go in front of the Zakanim and she should take off his shoe and spit on the ground in front of them. They have to actually see her spit. It's not theoretical. They can't hear it. They can't just 
like if they're at an angle from behind her and they only see the the spit land on the ground, not sufficient. They have to see the whole the whole thing. They have to see her spit, and it has to be in front of their eyes. And then ve'ansa ve'amran. This is what she says after that. This is the consequence that happens to a man, to the Shimon in our story throughout this Masechta, who uh, who won't marry his Yavama, uh, who is yeah his Yavama. Ad kan hayumakrin. This is how they would do the reading. This was a story about Ritter of Horkinus. He was under a particular tree in the city of Itim. The Gomer Eskola Parsha, he had them read way more than that. They didn't only read these limited psukim, they read much more. And then Huxakulio's Gomer Kola Parsha, they had to read the whole thing. The Pasuk reads, And his name shall be called among Israel, and Mitzvah with Dayanim, and Mitzvah with Talmidim. The Mitzvah is with the, uh, with the Dayanim and not with the students. So only the Dayanim would say something. If there was a Talmud sitting there learning, an apprentice, whatever the case may be, he wouldn't have to say, Rabbi Yudom are not true. Mitzvah al kola umdim sham lomar chalutzana. Everybody had to say. The Gemara, oh, yeah. Why does it have to say about Lashon HaKodesh? If they're reading Pesukim. Oh, we have this by Kriya Shema also. The Kriya Shema has to be uh, in Hebrew. We have certain things that have to be done in Hebrew. No, no, I understand. But if they're reading Pesukim, they're already in Lashon HaKodesh. Like, what, isn't it a... No, but let's say they don't speak Hebrew. They don't know Hebrew. Would we require of them to flip over into English or French or Spanish or whatever their, their, their mother tongue is? So no matter what they understand. That's what the Mishnah seems to say. Yeah, that's what the Mishnah seems to say. The second line? Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Yeah, that's the Mar Malcolm. So it seems to be that it's, they probably have to know what they're saying anyways. Probably, I, maybe. I don't know if it's like Kuba, but. I once saw a couple of actually. There's no question the woman's different. Neither of them is different. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because like in a pigeon on Ben, when we have the, you know, the secular uh, father who can barely read one word of Hebrew, forget about an Aramaic uh, back and forth. My based faith. Yeah. Come on. I, I, we would know people in this room would know how to read a little bit of Aramaic. We would understand, you know, which one do you want more? Do you want the color? Fine. We would maybe, maybe. But Ruba, the Ruba, the Ruba, the Ruba, the Ruba of the world has no clue what's going on. We don't require any translation, really. We have a basic understanding of what's going on and uh, that's sufficient. But here it has to be in Hebrew. The Gemara opens almost halfway down, three lines before the wide lines, Kuvav and Mibes. Amar of Yehuda, Mitzvah's Chalitza Korah. The Mitzvah of Chalitza says that she reads, the Kore, and then he reads, the Cholatas, and then she does, removes his shoe, the Rokakon, and then she spits on the ground, the Korah, and then she reads again. So this is Amar of Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda is an Amora. Why is, didn't he just, he basically just repeated the Mishnah. So the Gemara says, my hi, what's going on here? My Kamash Malan. <laughs> I don't need your help. I know how to read a Mishnah, well, supposedly. But well, that's what the Gemara says. He had to repeat himself. Why? Must nisan he says the Gemara. Hakamash malan mitzvah hachi. You're right. The mitzvah speaking in the in the ideal form. But what if things got out of order? What if things got all mixed up? Then less lan buzz. We saw earlier in the Gemara. The order is not leikuba. Says the Gemara. Tanya nami hachi. There's a brisa that supports this as well. One that we've also seen a couple of times. If the chalitza went before the spitting or vice versa, masha asa asui, it all counts. Then the Gemara gets super technical for the last little section here. And it says that when the woman is going to say her line and when the man is going to say his line, we can't put the comma in the wrong place. No, I don't want to marry you. Or, uh, uh, or no, I want to marry you. So there's like a little bit of a play in words here. This is what the Gemara says. Amar Abai, Haiman Demakri get Chalitza. When a person is going to be reading what he is going to be saying to do the Chalitza, Lo Likri Lidida, she should not say first the word Lo, Lichude, by itself. And then, the Ava Yavami, Lichude. You shouldn't say Lo, comma, Ava Yavami, my Yavam doesn't want to marry me, because it could be no. Ava Yavami, Demashma Ava Yavami, that he wants to marry me. So if you put the comma in the wrong place, then that can cause a problem. Ella, lo ava yavami in one sentence without, without breaking it up. And as well for him, below likri lidide, when he reads, he should not say lo lichude, the word lo first, and then chafatzdi, that I, I desire lichuda, because otherwise that sounds like demashma chafatzdi lekachta, lo, I don't, chafatzdi, I do want to be with her. So there's ways to misunderstand these psukim if they're read this way. Ella says abaye, it should be read lo chafasti lekachta in one breath, not literally one breath, but it should be read without commas in order to not have any misinterpretations. Rava doesn't agree at all. Rava amar avsuke milsahi the avsuke milsa leslan, but these are literally psukim and chumash. You're, you're, no one's going to reinterpret chumash because of the way because you you paused and took a breath in the middle or you put a little bit of a comma. You don't have to worry about that. All is fine and good. 
Ravashi Ashke Cheder of Kahana de Kamitzdar, Mikrila, Mikrila, Loa Viyavami. He uh, was working very hard, Kamitzdar. He was working very hard to say the, the Pasuk, to have her say the Pasuk of Loa Viyavami in one breath. Uh, she might have said it too slow. She might have put a little pause between the word lo and the word ava. So he was pushing her to say it the right way. We learned about rava already that there's that you can't misconstrue a pasuk in Chumash. No one's going to think that that's what's going on here. You're in Bezdin, standing there taking off a chalitza shoe. Lo ava yavami. You think someone's going to be like, lo, ava yavami. He really does want me. No one's going to do that. Says the Gemara. Rava, now this is a new interpretation. Or rava only agrees to his line in certain areas. But with the Pasuk of Lo Ava Yavami, he, he is concerned about that. It's just the other line that he's not concerned about, the line of Lo Chafat Silakachta. When a person is actually going to write a get chalitza, lichtov hachi, this is what they should write. This is the document indicating what happened. Akrinuha ledida, she read the pasuk mean me'en yivami ad ava yivmi. She read from the starting point until the end point. Ve'akrinuhu ledide, and he read the words mean lo from the word lo ad the kachta. So it says the Gemara, ve'akrinuha ledida mean kacha ve'ad chalutza na. And she then would read again. Now, there's a subtext to this Gemara over here, which is that when the Gemara is writing the Get Chalitza, we're very careful to not put many words together. Let's take a look at Rashi to give us the background of what's going on over here. Rashi is a third of the way down. Why does the Get Chalitza look like this? Why is it that there's only a couple of, of Pasuk words that are written this way? Because, says the Gemara, there's a side din that we're not necessarily aware of. Because the cloth upon which a get is written is not scored first with metal in order to make the line straight, you're therefore not really able to write the whole pasuk. The kaim alon we hold, ain kosvin dalatevos below sirtu. You're not allowed to write four words of cloth, four words of the Torah without sirtu. That's a big problem. Sometimes people write notes, they write for psukim. How does that work? Is it only on, oh, these are shilas and poskim. Is it only on cloth? Where is the restriction? But here, with this get chalitza, the concern was that we couldn't string together words of four or more, four words or more in regards to chumash. So therefore, it can only be written this way. Marzutra argued, Mar Marzutra said, misartate, big deal. Go get your scoring device and make some lines on the, on the cloth. What's the big deal? Misartate, the cost of the kula parsha. You can do whatever you want. The machlokas. So it says the Gemara, maskif loa, Mar bar idi v'halo nitan likasev. The halacha is that it should not be written that way, anyways. This is a big discussion in the poskim. Are you allowed to have a separate ktores, uh, which is psukim and chumash? Some people have them. It's not uncommon. This gemara is implying that it's not allowed. And I remember Rav Shechter, Rav Herzl Shechter, he said this once as well that he doesn't think it's mutter for people to have the the ktores in the separate cloth with sirtut and full psukim. He's not allowed to do that. We learned about this in another masech as well. I don't remember where. Um, Maybe it says over here. I don't think so. But the din is that a person cannot write pieces of Torah because if you only give a kid the cloth on Sefer Dvarim, he may think that there's no Bamidbar. So we don't do that. We only write one scroll. It's by Nevi'im, you can write each book separately. Have you ever seen a Torah that's Breshi's Shemos? Would have been a great fundraising tool. No, we don't do that. We're not allowed to. The whole Torah has to be written as one. And that's true for small parshios as well. So some poskim are very mocked that you're not allowed to have a separate cloth just for the Ketoros, big shail and poskin, based on this Havamina of the Gemara. The Hilchas HaKavasi, the Marzutra, the Halacha is like Marzutra, the Marzutra is of the opinion that we do, we are we are allowed to add Sirtud, and then you can write the whole thing. Okay, we're not going to learn the rest of that. So yeah, Sirtud is scoring the parchment to make sure that the writing is neat. So if you ever look inside a Sefer Torah, you'll see that there's a tiny little mark. We don't write, when we were kids in school, we would write so that the letters would touch the bottom of the line. Here, the sirtu would start, your hover, your, the letters are hanging at the top of the line. So if you look in a Torah, you'll see that there are these scored lines, and they write the letters. The sofa will write the letters starting at the top of the line to keep everything very, very straight. But there is no din sirtu by a get. Marzutra says you can even have it by a get. One last uh, very technical sugya, actually two small ones, but uh, that is as follows. So uh, what if it's windy outside? And she is rakak, she spits, and then it gets carried away by the wind. Such a technical question. Beautiful. Uh, halacha is so sensitive about keeping halacha properly. We need to answer every, every last nook and cranny, every shayla that comes up. Amar Abai, Rikakov, she does, does her job spitting. The kaltaso haruach gets blown away. Loasa below klum, it doesn't count. The chalitza is not chalitza. Could you imagine how technical this is? She still is able to now marry that man, the yava, because the chalitza did not take effect yet. My time. Well, what's the reason? Because the Pesach says, it needs to be that she spits in front of him, and it didn't happen. It blew away. Hilkach. 
Check this out. Hu aruch vehi gutsa. If he is very tall and she is short, then if she spits, no matter what, kalta sehu aruach ika befanav. No matter what, she, he's six two and she's four two, and she spits in front of him. Under all circumstances, the spitting was in front of him. However, he arucha, she's six two. The who goats and he's very short. He's four two, and if she spits up there at the six foot two level, being an adamati lahade ape, she's not. She's spitting well above his head. She has to lower herself mm -hmm. down to his so that their mm -hmm. eyes eye level are the same. Otherwise, she's not spitting yeah, in front no of him. We all know people that that's not true. We know people. There are couples like that. I they didn't do chalitza. I'm just saying it's. Uh, but that would be the din. Is that is that if she was let's say super tall and he was super short, so then the din should be that if there needs to be chalitza, either that they should do this where there's no wind, preferable, <laughs> and then the spit will fall to the ground. Gravity will do its thing. But if you're standing on a, in a very windy space and it's very windy, so she should literally kneel down so that they're eye level to one another. Otherwise, if she spits up here and the wind carries it, they're still. The, the nachalitza not yet taken effect. That's what the Gemara says. So the, literally the spitting has to take place in a way where it is actually opposite him in a visual way that he has to be able to see it. But even more than that, it has to be seemingly eye level or lower. The Gemara says, So let's say that a person, a woman only spit because she had eaten garlic and she had wanted to get some of the flavor out of her mouth, an overwhelming flavor, or achla gargishta, she had put some clay in her mouth, tobacco, whatever it is. There, that doesn't count because she's not, the rakika is not being done for the, for the sake of chalitza. She has something in her mouth. Spitting out a piece of gum, it doesn't, that's not Rikika, that doesn't count. My time up, the Yorka, me atzma, but you know, it has to be for the right reasons. It has to be for what she wants to be doing, not because of garlic, not because of anything else she was chewing up. But Marava, Tzricha, Daine, the judges as well, they need to be able to see. Very uncomfortable, I would imagine, when you saw it, it was probably an uncomfortable scenario, just guessing, socially speaking. You have to stand there and you have to spit in front of a bunch of rabbis. It's like, it, it's very strange. It's very, very strange. Some of the Hasidim spit during uh, Aleinu, uh, into our carpet, no less. But uh, that's already the similar idea, but uh, I guess the only similar idea. Oh, that's even worse. Mm -hmm. Okay, last little one in the most after that. We said that that's what the Pasuk reads in Mitzvah B'dayan, and the Talmud. And Tanya, the Bryce writes, Some Rabbi Yehuda Pamacha, Sanya Yoshim, Lifna, Rabbi Tarfon. The Talmud, and we're sitting in front of Rabbi Tarfon, the great Tanu, Vasa, Yavam Alachlot, and Yavam showed up to have Chalitza. Vamar Lanu, everybody has to talk against our Gemara, right? We saw the second sheet in our Mishnah at the top of the page uh, was the sheet of Rabbi Yehuda in our Mishnah. The last line of Rabbi Yehuda in our Mishnah was that everybody has to. So this is being reflected by Rabbi Tar from Bama Lanu. Anu kulchem chalutzana chalutzana chalutzana. But has to say it seemingly three times. Why do you have to say it three times? Where does it come from? Okay. Uh, what? Yeah. It's the, right. Yeah. Rashi doesn't even say anything about this, which is interesting. Okay. Hajjan Allah. Mitzvah chalitza yiratza. We should come back to this daf in seven and a half years. Uh, wishing you all a beautiful night. We have nine tomorrow.